Now this is the all electric MG4. It is a family car, not an SUV, which we've been waiting for. And there are plenty of reviews about this car and those reviews generally say that it has a good price point, that it has a good build quality. But what they fail to speak about is the electric tech in this vehicle, which is so important when you're choosing your next electric car. Today we're going to be diving into that and more. I'm also going to be giving you my opinion on which battery size you should get for this vehicle, so stick around for that. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't. If you have, hit that notification bell so you are notified the next time we upload another EV tech-focused review. I'm Luke and this is The Future is Electric. So MG, a former British brand, is now 100% owned by the Chinese auto manufacturer SAIC. And let me tell you, that could be a sign of things to come in the auto industry. If we were to look at the top 20 models, electric vehicles, sold last year in 2022, and you were to quantify them in a list, of the top 20, only six cars were not Chinese. Let that sink in. <laughs> so MG already offer three full electric vehicles in their lineup. However, this is the first one, the MG4, which is making use of their new modular scalable platform. This is a vehicle platform they've developed for full electric, where the battery pack is in the middle, motor predominantly in the rear of the vehicle. However, they will allow all wheel drive solutions with the motor in the front as well. Now, this platform is good for small sedans like we're in today, larger SUVs and even multi-purpose large vans can make use of this platform. Now, another interesting thing is the platform is predominantly a 400 volt architecture in, in regards to the electrical system, which is commonplace nowadays. However, critically, it is going to be upgraded to an 800 volt architecture very soon. And this is important because the more voltage you have, the faster you can charge that battery. And an 800 volt architecture is essentially going to bring charging times down to the level where we are nearly at par with the time it takes to refill a gas powered vehicle today. So there are four energy regeneration region modes in this vehicle the selection of which is done not from the steering wheel, but from the infotainment system here in the center console. Now the four modes, weak, medium, strong, and adaptive. Now I've had it on strong on our way here this morning. And I have to be honest, it's even in, it, in its strongest setting, it is generally weaker than much of the other electric cars available. So this is definitely not a case of a one pedal driving vehicle although it is an electric car after all so you might get away with these instances here and there where you just use one pedal but definitely definitely not a one pedal driving car like we've seen in other electric vehicles we have a permanent magnet synchronous electric motor and there are two motor options depending on which level of car you get the more base model gets you 125 kilowatts of power for 250 newton meters of torque. The higher end model is a 150 kilowatt motor, also for the same 250 newton meters of torque. Now, interestingly enough, the smaller model, having the smaller battery and the different battery chemistry, is lighter and thus accelerates a bit faster. So zero to 60 in, this, in the lower end model, 7.5 seconds, and the higher end model, 7.7 .7 seconds, which is, quicker than most of its competition around. So it does give you a good amount of power if you come to overtake or if you want to have a bit of fun at the traffic lights. So the efficiency here depends on which vehicle you go for. So the lower end version actually gets an efficiency of 11.9 kilowatts per 100 kilometers or 12.4 kilowatts per 100 kilometers in the higher end heavier version. Now. I am not seeing those range, those efficiency figures yet in the little I've driven this car so far, but I will be doing a driving video where we will be driving this car for a longer period of time. 
and I'll be comparing what I'm getting here in the river on a very rare cold day here in Malta because that the weather definitely affects the efficiency and we'll be comparing to what the company is stating versus what we're getting here in the real world because the claimed figures are actually very very good so your smaller battery pack will charge on AC at a maximum 6.6 .6 kilowatts which charges this car in 9.15 hours. That is maximum speed on type two. If you're going to use a rapid DC charger, you get 117 kilowatts of power, which charges the car on CCS connector at in 37 minutes. Now, what I'm going to start doing in these reviews is you're now going to see on screen a table, which is going to show you the different charging times you get depending on where you're plugging in the vehicle, because I hear this so many times at this point, that you go plug in the vehicle at home and you do not get the charging time I tell you in the review. Well, the charging time I tell you in the review is the best case scenario if you're doing everything correctly in terms of getting the highest possible power to the car. Now, if you plug in at home, you definitely won't charge in, in nine hours, especially if you're using a normal three pin plug. I'm also showing you the DC charging options for the lower end spec model here and again that varies depending on which speed charger you get currently in Malta the fastest speed is 50 kilowatt so despite this car being able to charge at 117 fastest chargers available 50 kilowatts at the moment so WLTP of this vehicle you have a 350 kilometer range in the smaller battery size option Larger battery size option gets 100 kilometers more WLTP at 450 kilometers. So interesting choice here by MG, offering the two battery packs, which I think is a fantastic idea. However, the difference between them isn't so large as just, just 100 kilometers, which means in reality, if you are an average driver, the difference between the two vehicles is going to mean that maybe for the um, smaller battery pack, you're going to charge once a week, and for the larger battery pack, you're going to charge every nine days. That is if you're driving the Maltese average of 10,000 kilometers per year. So not a huge difference. I think the decision there has to be based on what I'm about to tell you for the battery pack. So I think it is great. And one of the few cars we've seen on the channel, which is going to give you a choice of battery pack. So the smaller battery pack, 50 kilowatts. Larger battery pack, 64 kilowatt hour. But What's important here, because most reviews stop there, is that you're not only getting a selection of battery size, but you're actually choosing, indirectly without knowing, battery chemistry, which is so important. So that smaller battery is an LFP battery, lithium ion phosphate battery. Larger battery pack is a nickel, is an NCM, nickel cobalt manganese battery. We've seen more of the NCMs on this channel because they are more commonplace. Now, here's the thing, LFP batteries actually offer double the cycle life of NCM batteries, which means you're charging, discharging, charging, discharging the car. LFP actually, through science, has shown us that they last double the amount of time. So, the fact that you have two battery packs to choose from, where the difference isn't really so large, a hundred kilometers range difference, WLTP. And the fact that you're choosing between these two battery chemistries, my money is on the LFP smaller battery, especially if this car is going to be used in a city like driving field, where you have a very easy access to charging. Perhaps if you're going to be doing longer trips with this vehicle and you do need those 450 kilometers of range, then you should, then I guess you consider the uh, the higher end battery but from a battery chemistry point of view i am personally more in favor of the lfp so lfp is also better in colder conditions so if you're not in malta and you're watching this review for abroad and it's from a colder country that lfp is going to give you better performance um, better efficiency that's in fact what we're seeing than the the ncm battery it is also remarked as being safer than the ncm battery so batteries are being supplied also by Chinese manufacturer CATL in a partnership they have with, with SAIC. Battery pack found under the passenger compartment. And I'll be honest, 
you wouldn't be able to tell because the headroom here is fantastic and even the the height of the floor of the vehicle is pretty good that's because in this one pack design they actually have a battery pack which is just 4.3 inches tall which compared to the other electric vehicles around is actually one of the smallest battery packs available that battery pack is separated into a number of modules which are being liquid cooled we have a liquid cooling plate along the bottom of the vehicle just below those modules to make sure they keep this battery pack at 21 degrees celsius now that's important as i've said so many times in the channel the temperature or the operating temperature of the battery when it is charging when it is being used is important because that makes a huge difference on how long this battery lasts in the long term so the fact that it's being liquid cool does get a thumbs up or a check mark i guess from me <laughs> Now another interesting thing with this battery pack and more or less more the platform of the vehicle is that the battery pack is designed to be swappable. It doesn't mean it's swappable in this vehicle but it is designed to be. So in a market where you can do a, a, a battery swapping option, well this architecture does allow for that and can be used like that in market conditions where that is allowed. I mean, do I agree with it? I mean, yes, it will. A car which is sold without the battery gives you a, a cheaper price for the vehicle. But we've seen this in the past. The European automakers have gone through this. You sell the battery, you sell the car and lease the battery. That is a model that has gone away because manufacturers have gained so much confidence in the battery technology that these batteries are going to last. Again, electric vehicles have been on the road this generation of them for 13 years and the cars from 13 years ago still have their original battery packs in them with a very very few exceptions so this is a technology that is going to last so i'm very confident in the battery technology um, and especially this you could call it second generation of battery tech which has the liquid cooling and which has so many advanced features and the battery packs we saw 12 years ago so that rear wheel drive motor actually gives this car a 50-50 weight balance which means the weight on the front wheels and the back wheels is exactly the same which is a very rare thing to see especially in a car which is not designed as a sports car but an everyday vehicle. That 50 weight distribution actually gives you better handling making this vehicle safer. In fact it just scored a full 5 star in its 2022 safety testing which is great to see in this new MG. Now, I am going to be driving this car. That's gonna, that's, that video is coming out very soon, or if it's already out, link will be up above, depending on when you're seeing this video yourself. Another cool thing about this vehicle is there is an op can, optional vehicle to load adapter available. So that is a converter plug, so to speak, that sticks in to the charging socket and then gives you a the domestic plug out from the other end which means you can run appliances straight off the high voltage battery of this vehicle be it a kettle a drill or whatever you may need whether you're camping or just using it as a party trick vehicle to load is available i'd like to thank you for watching there is a patreon link below if you want to do a bit more to support the channel and obviously hit subscribe if you haven't it does help us out a lot as of recording this video we are just shy of a thousand subscribers um, around a year after we started this channel so your support does matter i'd like to thank peter once again for helping out with all the technical mg malta for letting us review this mg4 today and as always i hope i've convinced you that the future is electric